Hey everybody, Mr. Cronkite here to help you find factors. So let's say you have a number, and it's a number, it's a bigger number, right? So let's say it's a number like 152. Now 152 is a big number, you don't know the factors for that number. So remember, we developed a systematic way to find all of the factors of this number. Well first, we start with 1. Is 1 a factor of 152? Now think back to your divisibility rules. Of course it is, because 1 is a factor of everything. All right, 1's done. Now if we're following our systematic approach that we've used day in and day out, we are going to try 2 next. Is 2 a factor of 152? Well, let's see. What's the rule again? What's the rule? Oh, yeah. It has to be an even number. And as we know, 152 is even because it ends in 2. So 2 must be a factor. Now there are lots of ways to find out 2 times what. Maybe you want to guess and check. Hmm, well, 2 times 60 is 120, so it's got to be bigger. 2 times 70 is 140. We're getting closer. 2 times 80 is 160. So I know it's got to be between 70 and 80. Now, you can work and you can get close. You can try 71, 72, 73 until you find the answer. Now, some of you in class told me that last year you worked on a division strategy called partial quotients. So if you know how to do that, you can, of course, divide 152 by 2. Well, I know it goes in for sure 70 times. 70 times 2 is 140, and we're going to subtract. 2 goes into 12 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract again with nothing left over. We add our partial quotients here on the right. 70 plus 6 is 76. So that tells me that 2 times 76 equals 152. All right, let's try 3. Remember our systematic approach? We're going to try 3 next. Well, remember our trick for 3 is to add. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that 8 is not a multiple of 3. So that means 3 will not work. What about 4? What's our rule for 4 again? That's right. If you can divide by 2 twice, 4 is a factor. And since 76 is even, I know that I can divide again. So 4 must be a factor. Now some of you in class determined this really neat strategy for finding 4. Instead of dividing 152 by 4, what you did is you realized that when you double 2, you need to cut the pair of 2 in half. So what is half of 76? Why, it's 38, isn't it? Let's try that. 76 divided by 2. 2 goes into 76 30 times. 30 times 2 is 60. Subtract 16. 2 goes into 16 8 times. 8 times 2 is 16. Nothing left. 38 it is. I was right the first time. All right, that's 4. What about 5? Well, our rule for 5, of course, is that a number has to end in 0 or 5. That certainly doesn't end in that, so 5 doesn't work. What about 6? Well, our rule for 6 was that 2 and and 3 must be factors. 2 is, but 3 is not, so 6 won't work. Number 7 is one of those numbers that doesn't really have a rule, so you just have to try it. I'm going to use my partial quotients, my division, because I love dividing. 152 divided by 7. 7 goes into 152 at least 20 times. 20 times 7 is 140. Subtract, and we're left with 12. 7 can't go into 12, so that tells me that 7 is not a factor of 152.
All right. So now we've tried seven. What about eight? Eight doesn't really have a rule either, but we determined in class that if the pair of four was even, then eight's going to work as well. And just like two, we're going to double four to get eight and then cut 38 in half. And 38 divided by two. All right, some of you know this division strategy. It's called long division. Two divided by three is one. One times two is two. Subtract, bring down your eight. Two goes into 18 nine times. Nine times two is 18. Nothing left. Eight times 19 is my next factor. Now let's look at nine. This is our systematic way of getting all of our factors. All right, we're going to add up the digits again. One plus five plus two is still eight. Eight is not a multiple of nine, so therefore nine isn't one isn't a factor either. What about ten? Our 10 rule is kind of like our 5 rule, remember, but it's a little more specific. It can only end in 0. And last time I checked, 152 does not end in 0. So 10 is not going to work. 11. Hmm. 11 also doesn't have a good strategy. So we just have to guess and check. I'm going to do that now. What's 11 times 10? Well, 11 times 10 is one of those multiplication facts that we memorized. It's 110. That didn't work yet. What about 12 times 10? Sorry, we're working on 11s, aren't we? That's 11 times 11. 11 times 11 is 121. 11 times 12 is 132. And it's going to be 143 and then 154. That's not going to work. All right, let's look at those 12s then. Let's look at 12. We know that 12 times 12 is one of our basic facts. 12 times 12 is 144. So that means 12 times 13 must be 12 more than that, or 156. Man, that didn't work either. All right, we're out of rules now, so now we just have to keep trying numbers until we reach that magic stopping point. Let's try 13. 13 times 10 is 130. The next multiple would be 143. And then 156. Still nothing. What about 14? 14 times 10 is 140. The next multiple will be 154. Still nothing. 15 I know won't work because all the multiples of 15 end in 0 or 5. So let's try 16, shall we? 16 times 10 is 160. Well, that's too big. 16 times 9, then is going to be 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 1 is 9, 144. That didn't work either. What about 17? Let's try 17. 17 times 10, well, that's 170, that's too big. What about 17 times 9? 7 times 9 is 63, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 6 is 153. Close! All right, let's clear some space up here. Hopefully your paper's not as messy as mine. We just did 17. Let's try 18 now. Let's try 18. 18. Remember, I'm always going to count my times 10s. 18 times 10 is 180. Too big. 18 times 9. 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 1 is 9. Plus 7 is 162. Too big still. What about 18 times 8? 18 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 1 is 8. Plus that, 6 is 14. 144. Now we're too small. All right, 18 didn't work. 19. Now 19's next. Should I try 19? Now some of you at home are telling me no, of course, because I already have 19. Once you've reached a point, where you are starting to repeat numbers, that's how you know you're done. 
All right, good luck. On that paper, remember, you are going to do 12 problems, 12 of those problems. You're going to find all of the factors for them in a systematic way, just like you saw here. All right, everybody, bring that paper in tomorrow, and we will go over it in class. All right, have a great day, and good luck.